it is Monday and we've got the got moved back onto the box sets the as new ones uh, we did the Mustang 3000 we decided we'll be putting a new mic to that the uh, one we did on the air test wasn't really good enough Right, what have we got here? Oh, good grief. Well, we're not touching the mic. So, we'll be doing this on a standard replacement mic, and we will not be going to that. They're too dreadful to even bother with. Now, this has got the side screws in it, so what I'm going to do, I'll take those out, I'll put them back in the box. I think the customer was aware there was a power mic. Something left over from American AM ideas, isn't it? Whereas all these FM UK radios are speech processed. You know, I've spent decades in business radio. You don't see coppers with power mics, do you? Right, so we'll plug into the test instruments. We'll go through this before opening it up. I want my standard replacement mic. That one. I think I spotted it. It was starting to unscrew itself on one of the on-the-air test videos. Um, Ideally, I would find a screwdriver. Now it's my imagination. Whoa! left over from the last tune up right so, we want this in normal, that in high, that in normal, that in the centre position, and mic gain to full, RF gain, squelch. I'll tell you what, we'll plug in the extension speaker and the PA speaker. Now drop the mic again and we'll test PA. Um, testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, one two. Something's not right there, isn't it? Whoa! One two, one two, one two, one two, one two. One, two, one, two, one, two. I think we've got a dirty mic gain control there. So, 
Right, back to channel 20. And to put picture in picture on, and let's have a look at what kind of power this radio is doing. So we're in the 30 watt range, so we're looking at just there for 4 watts. And oh my goodness, this is lousy. Um, two point. I'll be generous and say two point nine. Channel forty was sluggish to go into transmit, so I suspect the VCO needs looking at. It's two point seven, and on channel one. 2.95. Back to channel 20. Current consumption is 945 milliamps. And on low power, the radio does what? It does about 100 milliwatts. not stable. Deviation just for the record, we'll be testing it properly on the test set behind me. Wow, it's 1.5. Frequency is probably spot on. Let us have a look. Let's put the camera on that. 79119, yeah. That doesn't really need altering, but we will anyway. So, we'll put that into the test set. 2779. I may as well set this right, because it's so close. I'll tell you what, it's another cracking sensitivity. Not point three one. For ten dB not point two five. Remember they say manufacturer says better than point seven. And for twenty Seven point zero point seven five. Now I'd like the squelch to open when it's at full at one hundred microvolts. Let's go with the attenuator, and so I'm at one, three, ten, thirty. It's coming at thirty. It's coming at twenty-eight to be exact. So that's not tight enough. It's a right wishy-washy squelch threshold. Knocks volume at the same time. Set threshold. Signal generator back on. 0.47. So just to finish up our exploration, put S9 back on the signal generator and it should read 100 microvolts. Uh, it needs to be, oh, it's reading 300 microvolts for S9, so that's lazy. Yeah, somebody commented that it's supposed to be 50 microvolts for S9. That's on ham radio equipment, not CB radio equipment. And they want to know where I get my facts from, and that's more than 100 service manuals. Um... Put it in the wrong box like a twit. So on transmit, what does the meter say? I think we're on low power still. It says bang on four.
and that will alter. So, so far so good with the switches. Get it opened up. I'll get the cloth on because uh, of the top. The bottom's got these feet. Not that it's kind of quite immaculate. We've had some cracking performers recently. So about time we had a spate of really poor performers. Away. We will probably end up. No, I'll start it. I won't say that. I was going to say we'll probably end up taking the bottom off. Um, but no, let's uh, see what we can do. What magic we can work. So we're going to set channel 40 to do the VCO first. We're looking for 4 volts on receive and 4 volts on transmit. So we want a earth to chassis. That, and that, by that I mean, I shouldn't have said chassis because that chassis which is floating on these, it's the real earth which is there. And positive to far end of resistor 4 which is there. Should have 4 volts on receive. I did, it doesn't need adjusting but we will. And on transmit. Should be 4. I will just touch that up. If I can get to the trimmer capacity which has got my clip in the way. back to receive they are interactive so you've got to be mindful that you can go backwards and forwards transmit receive excellent so and it's supposed to be that's about where it's supposed to be um, that's receive, that's transmit, so that's VCO done. Otherwise you start to end up with channels dropping off in temperature extremes. Um, so it was, um, it was just slightly wrong wasn't it anyway it's four plus four now so let's see whether we can get something more out of the transmitter the manufacturer says it should do 3.8 watts and in tune up it should achieve 4.4 .4. so let's see let's go over to our main meter we're on the 30 watt scale so we're looking at there so it's the centre of the peak. That, that was spot on as it was. That was spot on as it was. And 
that wanted a little tiny bit. Now we're going to move on to the PA. So we're currently at 3 watts, so we brought it up 0.1. So we want this yellow on to maximum. That's actually brought us up to 4. We want the uh, clear one up to peak. That was already at peak. We want the green one to peak. And it's just scraped in at 4.5. Check that they're at peak again. Because once again they're interactive. I'm unking in between because the transmitter can't support constant transmit when it's temporarily at full power. And we've all seen these left at full power. And legality aside, you're not going to gain any range, of course, because the difference between 4.4 uh, watts and, and 4 watts is, is just not worth bothering with. But it will melt these uh, coils. So and you're not going to get another so it's writing off a set for no reason so what the manufacturer says we do is we turn the yellow on clockwise so we get to 4.4 and then the manufacturer says we turn the green one anti-clockwise so we get to 3.8 but that's because they've got to get the radio through customs we don't because they're already here and that is spot on the four So, let's see what we've got. Channel 40 wants to be within point 0.1 of that's 4 and a tiny, tiny bit. And that is 4 and a tiny, tiny bit. So, we've got 4 watts, 4.01 and 4.01. And I'm absolutely sure that the powers that be are not coming knocking on doors for that 0.01 of a watt. So, uh, what's the power consumption now? Let's go back to channel 20. And channel 20 says 1.136. That is really efficient for that power output. They usually come in at 1.25. Now, low power, I suspect we've got a dirty preset. So, let's switch it to low power. Yeah. So, I need to recover a service all switch cleaner. There is one here without a spout. We can aim that in the general direction without having to go on a little walk to Mr. Chippy's department and pinch the other one back. So, waggle that one about. They do get dust in them and when they've been used a lot, they crack. So, uh, let's see what happens now. Four hundred milliwatts. Let's go and check the deviation with the test set behind me. Before we do that, I'm going to set the You've got two here, one's a kind of feedy backy Mikey gain thing, and its best position is the center. Um, you'll notice if you're ever servicing sets from abroad with this similar chassis, but for Europe, um, the, it's not there, it's a fixed resistor, and it, it could easily have been a fixed resistor here, but it isn't. Right, let's have a look what it says. Voila. Voila. One, two. I've got no transmitted audio. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. make sure I'm just going to turn the radio off and then we're going to go from CB to PA just in case we've got some dirt there 
Testing one, two, one, two, one, two. No, no transmitted audio. Let's go back to PA. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Right, well, we've lost transmitted audio, we've lost PA audio. One, two. One, two. The first thing we're going to do is just, uh, I'll just pause the video, we'll just check it with another mic. Right, so we haven't got many left, but uh, let's try it on a new mic. One two one two. One two one two. One two one two. Wow, look. So no, we haven't got a mic problem. Okay, so the next day, of course, it's not malfunctioning, but I've also sprayed the um, PACB switch and the mic gain control, which wanted spraying anyway, with the sweat service or switch cleaner. So um, right now we'll just see what the deviation is, especially if we go to CB. <coughs> well, it's about 1.9. So having adjust the AGC one to the central position, did I do that yesterday? I did, yes. I'll just the deviation Whoa. there we go so that did con conclude the transmitter all right we'll turn our attentions to the receiver and what I'm going to do instead of putting this back in its box or, or we're going to of course move on to other repairs um, we've got two more box sets to do for this gentleman another York 863 and a Roto 220 I'm going to intermingle them with uh, other jobs from other customers I've got a Maxcom 16E next um, this will stay out and will be tested every day to see whether it's uh, malfunctioning or not because once you've had this happen I don't want to be sending sets back which have got something which is intermittent but the fact it worked until I tested PA uh, I'm starting to think it's the CBPA switch the other day uh, I think it was the same customer we did the uh, Rotel 230 and when I went to test the tone switch you got high low tone on those like you got high medium and low on these um, there was no difference so again it was tarnished contacts on the switch which is an interesting point. Let's see what the tone switch does on here. So we're at. See, that's fine. It's high, low tone on these as well. Right, so we'll get the signal generator. I better get the lead back off the other test set. I've taken the bottom off this, and we've looked for dry joints, but I can't actually see any. I'm sure we've got it by doing the PA switch. Right, um, so we want the signal generator on. We want 2779125 on the signal generator. We'll just 
just going to check the sets on frequency, which is something else I hadn't done. So, when I initially tested it, the gear had only been on for 10 minutes. 27, 79, 113, so it's still the same. Let's pop that onto frequency. Keep it slightly high. So it was 1.8, and it's now 2.2 to a peak of 2.5. 279128. And now we will do the um, detector. Wrong camera. Try that camera. That's a better one. So if on the detector, which is in the 455 kilohertz IF, the lower IF, um, the recovered audio, if this is wrong, you end up with either quiet audio on receive or garbled audio. It was absolutely spot on where it was. I wouldn't make a motor mechanic, would I? Oh, I don't know who looked at this last. <gasps> I'd say to the customer, no, no, it was actually absolutely spot on. We did the service, but it was spot on. So I want about 4 dB on the cyanide meter. So we're not saturating the receiver. It was already working well on receive. Looking back, it was 0 0.31. We have seen 0 0.22 on these. Let's see whether this can, this one can do it. Wow, got a gain there. So now we'll drop the attenuator down. So we're back to about there. Try the next coil. That's spot on as it was get the extra circuit on these which you don't get on the Roto 220 which used to do with selectivity otherwise known as bleed over so we're going to move on to the IFs now the intermediate frequency coils just put a bit more signal on not enough to saturate but just a bit more signal that's spot on spot on, there's one under this wiring somewhere peekaboo spot on anyway so the only one which was slightly out was that let's get a new reading about 12 dB there oh right it's not point two so it is one of those really good ones you know what we're going to do a set in a few weeks and it'll be a, a 0.7 microvolt it won't be this and you go, you're all going to go my well, goodness that was deaf and I'm going to say it meets the specification so if I change scales we've got an overlap so it's still 0.2 it's probably 0.195 and for 20 dB Got 0.43, so it's a real improvement despite it not looking like it. Let's put a hundred microvolts on the test set.
we want a, we want S9 on the meter. So 100 microvolts on the CB radio in the UK is the S9 calibration point. There's our meter preset. So that's done. Now we need to do the squelch. So squelch to full. So I want this radio for the squelch to open at S9. So there's three microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100. That's exactly where I want it to be. Now before, it was 28. It's now 100. So just that tune-up has fixed that alignment problem. Hopefully we've got just as good sensitivity on the squelch. So we drop the attenuator to 0.3 and I switch the signal generator to standby. The red light comes on to say it's on standby. So on the radio, I'm going to adjust the squelch for threshold. Just like that. Switch the signal generator on, which is parked at 0.3 of a microvolt. It's come straight in. And it's, it's 0.3. So there we go. So that's now 100 microvolts. We've done that. So, NV, this set had intermittent PA and TX audio. Um, CB PA switch cleaned and mic gain control clean so this set doesn't come with the microphone we're not uh, messing about with a stupid power mic um, the customer will have got another mic um, so that's absolutely fine seems to have had some soldering around there at some point that looks all right um, I think before I put this to bed, do I need to clean the board? No, it's you know it's been factory washed and and it looks all right. If we're looking for dry joints, we're kind of looking in in this type of area. But I've looked at this with a magnifying glass, not with a microscope, um, and I can't get it to play up. Let's go back to PA. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, and you can see we if I can I do have a vibrator, I have had that on it as well. But there's no no problem at all. But we will monitor it, as I say, uh, to make sure that cleaning those two things, the uh, PA switch and the mic gain control uh, just to make sure that that is all that was up with it. We don't have capacitor problems with these usually. Had it been a Uniden I'd be changing capacitors. Had it been a Uniden it wouldn't be as sensitive as this. Right, we'll unplug the test gear. Put the lids back on. Don't forget if you buy the Fidelity 2000, the Banatone 5 Star, or the Harvard 420M, you get a three and a half inch speaker rather than the three inch speaker that you get on these and all the others.
I've actually had, you know, this is hard to believe, but I've actually had people put comments like, you know, like I do a Fidelity 2000. Well, they're crap they are. Well, it's exactly the same as this, but you get the bigger speaker. So doesn't that make it better than this? Where do people get their ideas from? Yeah, Fidelity 1000 is crap. Not the 2000. The 2001 uses Simon at 002 F chassis, which isn't quite as good, but it's a very competent set. Of course, it's the same as that um, Mustang uh, chassis, which we were doing the Mustang yesterday. Let's put those trimming tools away. Get a scratchy corner test done. Pronto, we should be able to start on another CB, which is going to be a Maxcom 16E. We've got two in for repair. I'm going to do them both consecutively. I think we'll do one of those and we'll move back on to one of this customer's sets. I think next time we'll do his Rotel 220. I know we did a Rotel 220 for another customer, but this is going to be a boxed one. Right. So we'll put it on the roof, Ariel. The Antron 99, just mounted above the gutter height of a single story building. Oh, I've got the PA speaker in, haven't I? RF gain to full. Light gain to full. Dimmer. Somebody asked about Delta Tune. It's um, in the zero position, everything's on frequency. And in the positive or minus position, it shifts the receive frequency very slightly to compensate for people who are transmitting slightly off frequency, which of course should never be happening in the first place. It's a gimmick. You only need on off and volume. One and a Roger. Tina Roger. Nobody out there. Isn't it lovely living in the middle of nowhere? Good. Right, we'll do an on the air test to that. Thank you for watching. Noting how a seemingly newish set, because it's 40 odd years old, wasn't quite right. Thanks for watching.